the kids are upstairs and they're playing and I hope they don't make too much noise. I think for now they are well behaved so I think it's time to make a video. It also means that I don't use the backdrop with the shirts. A, there's no shirt to retire. I'm still in the semi-final with at least one team. And B, I think it's a nice background anyway with my little schedule here in Russia with some Russian, um, how to say, feel to it. Yeah, I really like I, I really like that it's made. I would like to show you a little bit more, but um, basically here are the quarterfinals, then here comes the semifinal, final, and here were the group phases. Uh, it's all very colorful. It's not very easy to uh, look at, but it's very arty, I would say. Well, let's talk about the game. I'm also wearing the France jersey. It's not because I'm celebrating greatly. Yes, France is a team that I like, but I really liked Uruguay as well, and I was kind of a little bit dejected that Cavani could not play. We all were afraid that it will happen, and yeah, it's probably robbed us of a better game, to be honest. Um, yeah, so Suarez was more or less alone on the front. Storari was not in any way an adequate replacement. He might be good with his aerial powers, but um, nothing with the feet. He seemed like a foreign object in this entire team. Uh, the game started out with Uruguay a little bit on fire, and then France even getting a quarter chance at the beginning. Then after 15 minutes, Mbappé was all alone by himself in the box, but the ball was a little bit weird for him to really take. And make something of it. And then France took control of the game, but it was very much a midfield game. Uh, there was nothing really going into the box. It was actually Uruguay showed their strength, uh, that they're a little bit tougher. They tested the French guys. I think the Pavar was not smoothly running for a while. But yeah, this was to be expected. And that's the Uruguayan game. Uh, it was very well organized, uh, but the French were equally organized. So, um, and they took control of the game without being threatening. It took a free kick by Griezmann um, that I really thought what he did ahead of the free kick was remarkable. So it took that to really break the deadlock and get the game a little bit started. Free kick was, uh, from the goalkeeper's perspective, on the left side of the box, a little bit outside. Uh, everyone is of course trying to be in there, referee, I gotta talk about him, um, referee is telling everyone, yeah, we have VAR, don't do shit, we know how uh, serious this is taken by the players, since VAR is not used now to make any um, judgment calls on, uh, to resolve judgment calls, so yeah, I thought it was a little, little bit ridiculous, but then Griezmann is running to the ball and stops. And I thought, that's interesting. And you could see at that moment, the Uruguayan defense was jumping out to put, pull every, 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 everyone offside, but the free kick was not taken. So they had to go back and then Griezmann shoots the ball. And of course, no one is upside, offside. And Varane, it lands beautifully on the head of Varane, who makes a textbook header into the corner. He, he, he didn't have to head it much. He just had it to deflect it a little bit like that. Goals in the corner, France is ahead, 1-0. This was a genius moment, I think, by Griezmann. Uh, to really call out the Uruguayan defense, what are you doing? Put them a little bit in disarray and use it right and um, use the slight confusion uh, to make the first goal. And Uruguay came storming back. Uh, I think it was also free kick, and Caceres heads the ball uh, towards the corner and Loris which makes a, I will almost say the save of the tournament, but makes a wonderful save. Uh, that was really totally outstretched, got it right with his hand, right here, could stop the ball. Um, it was very close to the goal line, but uh, already outside, so Godin couldn't really make anything out of it anymore. Um, yeah, this was the big chance for Uruguay to e e equalize, and at that moment the game had fire, and I really thought we are in for a good second half. And yeah, Uruguay um, came out storming, 
and again a small chance to do something and try to take control of the game and France was sitting back trying to manage their lead uh, which tellingly they are adept doing so and then it took you know they had like a, a relief attack it was not really anything the ball gets to Griezmann he shoots it on goal and kind of it takes a wicked turn just ahead of Muslera and Muslera he wanted to pat it or should have fisted it uh, and nothing would happen but he tried to pat it it goes it takes a wrong turn it goes over him into the goal yes it was a goal keep keeping blunder and I think from that moment on everyone knew the game is decided uh, Uruguay brought on strikers Mbappé disgraced himself a little bit uh, by faking some injury in Neymar proportions. I think uh, when he got taken off, Deschamps clearly, clearly, clearly showed him that's not how the, the way, way to go. I also saw how Pogba wanted to get in the middle of it and everyone took him away. And again, Griezmann said, uh, not, not, not Griezmann, um, Deschamps said to him, what are you doing? You're, you're on the yellow. Don't, 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 don't do stupid things now. And that's the one thing that I also know, know to say, I mean, uh, the game was done at that moment. Uh, there was nothing coming from Euro, Euro anywhere. You even saw in the 85th minute on um, number two of, Euro, of, of Uruguay, I don't want to say Sanchez, but it's for sure, sure. He was already crying because he knew the game is done. France killed off the game really, really professionally. Um, there was nothing happening any, anymore. And I think everyone on the field knew that that Uruguay just cannot do more and France has full control of it. So um, that was that. But now back to Deschamps. I saw that Deschamps is a father figure to, to these players. That was for me the most heartwarming thing about the whole game. Beside the fact that before the game the teams were very friendly with each other and yeah there is the story that uh, Griezmann's seemingly best buddy at Atletico Madrid is Godin. And so he didn't even celebrate, and that's um, at least the commentator made a story that Griezmann feels very sympathetic to uh, towards the Uruguayans. Yeah, and I mean the defense of Atletico Madrid is Uruguayan, so yeah, he probably has something there. So there was a lot of respect ahead of the game. The game was played tough. I mean, Uruguay really tried to uh, attack the French in such a way that you know in intimidate them a little bit but not really unfair yes maybe the referee could have shown a yellow card earlier on to make it uh, not i don't want to say brutal it was never really really brutal but there were a few fouls in, in there they probably would have warranted a yeah, yellow card sooner but and afterwards the mutual respect shown I this was for me an um, eye opener. Yes, they were cel celebrating, but I saw when Griezmann went to the Muslera and kind of you know showed he doesn't feel well about it. Um, I really felt that those are two teams that respected the hell out of, out of each other. Back to Deschamps for a second time. I saw he's a father figure. He might not be the greatest tactician, but I think he has full control over those players. He shows the players, he shows them, I'm proud of you, buddy. Um, great that uh, they did it, you really did well. But he also admonishes them when it's really the right time. And um, yeah, to me, Deschamps, yes, he's 20 years at least older than most of these other, other players, so he would uh, qualify as a father. But for me, Deschamps is not that old. Yes, he has gray hair. But that guy at 20, just 20 years ago won the uh, World Cup in France as the captain. And I think this is what the French Federation sees with him, that he is actually a natural authority, a natural leader. There was a reason why they called him the general uh, when he was the coach of France. Uh, no, the captain of France. So the, it was the general and the president. Le général et le président um, Deschamps and Laurent Blanc. Those two ran the team. And I think... Uh, it, Kind of, it's telling that Deschamps took over from Laurent Blanc, who actually lost uh, the team. But Deschamps took a good grip on it. He also what he's doing, the squad. He is keeping the young players. He and if someone disgraces himself, he's out of the squad. He really uh, makes a tough line, but he's like a father um, to his players. And I think this is what makes a great team. And you could see the team itself is very much. Um, 
together, they respect each other, they are not at each other, and they um, they work well. And this could do wonders for France. I'm actually there. Yeah, they're getting better and better. I think this was a very, very mature performance. This is the type of performance that I saw of Germany four years ago. I'm not saying France will become world champions because Brazil, if they would make it, would be a tough call of them. It would be the third South American. I already said France has to go through all of South America almost. I mean, they already had Peru in the first stage that they knocked out. Uh, Argentina, Uruguay, potentially Brazil. So the only team that they could knock out from South America is Colombia. Yeah, it was a very mature performance. I think this French team has the tools to become a world champion. Will they become? I don't know yet, but they surely have the tools. Uh, I like how solid they are on the back. They have some uh, inspiration on the front. Although Griezmann is not in his best shape, but then you have Mbappé, who of course had a tough game today. I mean, that was clear also. Uh, against this Uruguayan defense, you're not uh, getting as much space against as against Argentina, and that's also the one thing that will be interesting when they play Brazil, because the Brazilian defense was also uh, quite solid distance. Well, those are my thoughts. I'm looking forward to the evening game. Um, I was more excited before I made my preview <laughs> when I saw how lopsided it is for Brazil. But yeah, France can now look at their opponents and see who they will play and probably they will feel good about it. I can say Vive la France. I'm sad for Uruguay. I think they they played a good tournament. They played two games that I really liked watching. Uh, only against Saudi Arabia and I didn't really see that one. They were a little bit, but uh, what they showed against Portugal and also how quickly they uh, took care of Russia showed me also that this is a very, very strong team. And unfortunately uh, for that change generation, it's probably the last one. Maybe they have the South American Championship still coming up. Well, let me know what you thought about this game. Uh, what do you think of France? And if Uruguay still will go on. And I will talk to you after the next game. I also warn you, should Brazil win, I'm gonna wear a Brazil shirt. I just decided to do so. It is cold, so the long sleeve is uh, warranted. Uh, I might wear the Brazil shirt or some other yellow shirt, not Swedish. It's time to do that. Just to, if I have a jersey of a team that qual uh, qualifies, I might just wear it. Okay, long video. Now I'm gonna call the kids for dinner and put them to bed so that I can watch Brazil, Belgium in peace. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the game too, and I will talk to you soon. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.